This is a donated request from uh, You Buy We Rush. It's another Q&A session. It's different from the last one. And um, so we'll just get this. This will be one video. Um, before we start, there's a thanks button on the channel. You can donate. You don't have to. You can subscribe if this is what you like. And if you don't want to do any of that, just give me a thumbs up. It is a little warm in here, so... Apologies for that, but let's get to the video. I'm open to any question. Ask me whatever you like, but this is going to be question and answer, not debate time. So ask your question, I will listen to you, and you listen to me. So, your turn. Hit me with the hard stuff. He's done. <laughs> good, huh? It's, it's okay. very good. I have my parking permit. Go for it. I know. I hope I take it here before. Good. Do we drink blood? No, we don't. Are we vampires? No, we're not. Good. Okay. The Alan's giving. Yes. For the media only, or for the welfare of society only? Excellent. So zakat, the obligatory charity that we pay every year. There are certain categories of people that apologize. I can't really hear. So I have to put this on because I can't really hear too well as to what's being said. So apologies. I mentioned the Quran that you can give it. All of those are people who are in need. I mean, people who are in some genuine need, whether it is the people who work. But while in that system, so they have to be paid so they can work, whether they are masakin or yatim, somebody who's an orphan, somebody who's, uh, who can't, or fuqara, who are people who can't meet their basic needs, but they don't go towards priests or towards building palaces or like Farrakhan and his big, you know, mansions. This is not Islam. In Islam, it has to go to certain categories of people. Who wants to know more detail can come to the classes, we'll get over in great detail. I really want to kind of encourage the non-Muslims to ask questions. You guys are Muslims, you already know a lot, and you have access to me all the time. So <laughs> if you're not Muslim, I'm going to give you preference. I know it's kind of, you know, being prejudiced a little bit, but it's all right. You know, my brother and sister will forgive me here. So I really want to encourage non-Muslims, because maybe you won't get this opportunity very often to ask somebody about Islam who is a Muslim, who has studied Islam. Not that I'm a big scholar or anything, but I've had some time studying. So. Um, so ask me a question, you know, I'm sure you thought about something, you know, do you guys eat pork? No, we don't. So, you know, that was easy. Why, why not? Why not eat pork? Excellent question. Um, if you look at every animal, it has its place and it's in the cycle of life. Some animals are meant to be eaten, some animals are not meant to be eaten. Some animals, if you eat them, you destroy the cycle of life, you know. So, we believe as Muslims that pigs were not created to be eaten. And that's why if you look at even the Old Testament, which according to Jesus, he didn't come to get rid of, but to reinforce. So according to the Judaic religion, and in reality, the Christian laws, and then in Islam, pigs have been forbidden to eat. Now, that's a religious uh, view, but I can also give you a scientific view. I studied health here at Mesa College, and we did an experiment, maybe some of you did it as well. We took different types of meat and put them out to rot. The first one to rot, and the one that went the worst and developed maggots and all kinds of bacteria and horrible things was pork. And that's why many doctors will tell you that eating too much pork, and if it's not cooked well enough, it will cause many more diseases than beef or chicken. It's the worst meat for you. There's a person in San Diego, you can Google this, who got a, a parasite in his brain from eating a pork taco and TJ. So if you go to TJ, you don't need to pork tacos, right? I, mean, I don't eat pork anyway, so I'm safe from it, right? Now, maybe somebody could possibly eat, scientifically, pig in a manner that is clean, but if the harm is more than the good, it's better you stay away from it. You know, you could probably drink some poison and live through it, but don't try it, all right? So, scientifically, pig is a horrible meat for you, and in divine laws, in all the earlier divine laws, you see pigs were forbidden for consumption, so as Muslims, we don't eat pork. So we love pigs because they're safer on us. I actually always wondered the question why, and I was I was told uh, and uh, I was given an answer that. Um, oh, I'm going to butcher it now that I'm on the spot, but it's it's something to the effect of 
all someone someone one time said that uh, souls that weren't sent to heaven or hell maybe you understand what I'm this they weren't sent to heaven or hell they're like oh I thought I was I thought I was gonna cough and then it was a yawn they weren't sent to heaven or hell so their souls were put in pigs uh, and may, or no maybe it was uh, people who couldn't go to heaven so their souls were put in pigs and that's why pigs can't look up because they can't look up to see heaven I, I, I'm just and so when you eat a pig when you consume a pig you are consuming a soul and you are taking that person's soul away so they will never have the option to repent and go to heaven it, it was something to that effect if you've heard of this you can tell me what it was if you if this is the first time you've ever heard of it then yeah it was if it sounds weird i thought it was really weird but you know hey what the hell do i know <laughs> they're like hey i'm not gonna eat you don't worry about it don't worry <laughs> now if you're a yummy cow yeah, you're in good excellent question why pray five times a day so as muslims we believe in following the religion the way that our creator has revealed it to us so in the quran and in the way of the prophet peace be upon him who were in wasn't it originally supposed to be 50, was it 15 times it, it is how the story goes muhammad talked to god and god said something like praying 15 times and so Muhammad left, or maybe it was 50. Was it 50? I'm gonna say 15, but it could have been 50. Uh, anyways, he walked back and Moses, I think it was Moses was like, yeah, that's too many times. Talk to him again. So he went back and he talked to him. He got to drop down to 10. He came back and Moses was like, man, go talk to him again. And that's pretty much how it was. I would have been in that situation where like, Moses, you want to come with me? You want to, because I don't want to be the one who, who looks like the jerk here, so. I'm going to say Moses would like to speak now. You want to bring in? No, you don't? Okay, good. Then we're going to pray this amount of times because I'm not going to keep going back there. I look like a jerk. But yeah, like, I think that's what it was. It was like Moses was just like, come on, knock it down a little bit more. Come on, man. we got a lot going on. <laughs> instructed to pray five times a day. The timings of those prayers are in the Quran itself, and I can show it to anybody who needs to see it. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, he instructed exactly. And there's a big gap. It's not like you have five seconds to say your prayers. You have like, you know, about an hour, two hours, three hours, depending on the prayer, to fulfill a five minute prayer. And this is the way it was shown to us by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, this is why. But some of the benefits, it kind of gets you back aligned. You know, throughout your day, you get tempted. You know, in the morning, you're like, I'm gonna be a great guy today. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Then you're like walking around like, I could cheat on that test, you know? and uh, you know, I could maybe take a look at that. Uh, the teacher's got his nose me, you know. And then you're like, let me go pray. And you're like, oh man, I'm praying, looking, I'm standing in front of God, I'm going to cheat now, I can't do this, you know. And it kind of puts you back in line. So five times a day, it kind of reminds you that you should be a good person, that you're a Muslim, you have rules and regulations, and gets you back on track. Cool? Okay. It kind of recenters you, refocuses everything. Yep. Okay, that makes sense. I can't argue with that. That's solid logic on, some harder questions you got too easy go ahead <laughs> St. Patrick's Day yes so uh, what we find in the earlier religions that people who were pious people who were prophets people who were uh, saints or good people people started to worship them and you find this with Jesus you know originally if you look at the biblical writings uh, you will see Jesus calling people to worship God or as in Hebrew we call to his father not literally but in the sense of being God and then as time went on as St. Paul came and Pope Damasus and other people they started to worship Jesus himself and then you start to see a, a divinity of Mary and then you have Catholics who say divine she is divine she should be worshipped and Protestants who say no she's not divine she shouldn't be so when you have images when you have statues it leads to this kind of a thing 
To the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he strictly forbid Muslims from making pictures or statues. So we don't start worshipping him as a person. We worship that one true creator that we have no image. Okay. So to not have a picture goes back to the earlier stages of uh, Islam when they had all the false idols and false gods, you know, the rocks and all the, the carvings and all that. If there's something there, someone will pray to it. So if you remove all of it, the only thing left to pray to would be... That's... that makes sense yeah that's that's a really good logic i gotta say this though when i was a kid in my room growing up i had this painting of jesus and i you know i wasn't i i wasn't religious but my my mom so she she put it up and i want to say it had like a little switch where like you it could be a night light the only problem was the lights were up above and when you turned them on they shine down on him and for whatever reason the lights it wasn't like straight across it was like three or four three or four different bulbs so when i turned it on it lit up certain areas and and some areas were still dark and it always looked like when the light came on and it was nighttime it always looked like jesus turned into a little bit of a demon and it freaked me out, so I refused to have that light on, that night light on. My mom was like, "You want me to turn on the night light?" I was like, "No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll suffer through." I was petrified when that night light came on. I'd be laying there. <laughs> Pull the blankets up over your head. I was scared. <laughs> We don't give Allah our creator an image either. We don't say he's a man or a woman or a blue guy or monkey or elephant head, human body, none of that stuff. We believe he's a creator who, who cannot be seen in this life. In the hereafter, you can see him, but not in this life. He's too great for that. So we don't believe in images. Um, and that's a part of our religion. And when somebody does make images, especially when they make them when they're not historically accurate, when they're not done for academics, they're done, done to poke fun and hate, it hurts us. So, is that good or you You sure? Uh -huh. I can keep going. I just want more. Okay? More. All right. More? Uh, I was kidding. I'll keep going, man. And me and you are staying, man. Everybody else can leave. I hope you're parking for this long. All right, come on. More questions. I'm um, open. Go ahead. So, what if you can't afford to go to Mecca? Excellent. If you're unable, whether it's physically, like you're sick, or you know you have no legs, or any other kind of physical disability, or if you're financially not able to, you don't have to, and you're not a sinner. God in Islam, Allah never puts a burden upon anybody more than they can handle. So if you don't have any wealth, you don't have to pay zakah. Zakah is only for somebody who has saved money. Not even their income, because you could be making an income by spending it on your kids and your wife and your husband. So if you're not saving money, then you don't have to give any. But if you're just sitting there building your bank balance and talking about, I get $50 billion, but you're not getting support, um, <laughs> yeah, somebody got that, right? So then in Islam, why are you just putting, sitting on that money? Put that money into the economy, either stimulate the economy or give it to those that are in need. And if you don't have to give it everything, you're not going to become a mom, but 2.5% is nothing. But it'll help somebody. If you are unable to go, you don't have to go, and you're not a sinner. You're perfectly forgiven of that because you're not able to. If you can't stand up and pray, you can sit and pray. If you can't sit and pray, you can lay down and pray. It's very practical, really. Go ahead. Basically, it's taking the excuses away. Oh, I can't pray today because, you know, okay, well, if you can't, if you can't stand, then kneel. No, my knees hurt. Lay down. Like, it's, it's removing every obstacle you can have. If you couldn't financially afford to go, which to me would be a big thing. That would be a, a, a financial thing. I, clearly, I'm not going to fly there just to do the prayer and then be like, all right, guys, it was fun. See ya. And then like, hop on a plane. I would want to stick around. I would want to experience everything. So it, it would, it would you know, it's not free. So it would cost. So that would be my my big thing, my big fear. My, it, 
not fear, but the, the financial fear, not fear of being around people. If I was Muslim, being around people of the same faith who want to welcome you in, like, no, what is that? That, that, how, that wouldn't be terrible. Yes, when we pray, we only pray to Allah. And who is Allah? Allah is a name given to the one God, Al-Ilah, the God. Yani, there is no other God except Him. Allah is not a Muslim God. Like when I was younger, there was a little book in my middle school here, and we also in middle school. So it, had a, it said, Allah, the Muslim God. I was like, wow, I didn't even have a proprietary God. <laughs> Did we copyright this? <laughs> so Allah is an Arabic word, but that deity, that creator has been known by many names. Even in Islam, we have many names. In one of the sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he told us about 99 of them. In others, like I have written 114 of them down, names that God is known by. In other books, in other languages, in the time of Moses, in the Aramaic, Hebrew languages, he had other names. But we know him as Allah. Why? We don't really like the word God. Why? Because the word God means his gender, right? If you talk about God, then a female of that would be what? Come on. Goddess. Goddess, right? Now, so God denotes a man. A goddess would be a woman. The word Allah has no gender to it. Because we don't believe God's like a person. He's the creator of people. If you think of it this way, you could use the word God for others. You could say, that guy is the God of basketball. Or he's the God of rock and roll. But the word Allah cannot be used except for that one creator. And that's why we like that name. But we know Allah as Rahman, as Rahim, Malik, as Kudus, as Jabbar. We know too many beautiful names. The loving, the forgiving, the, the ever merciful. Those are all names of Allah. Cool. Where's the heart of this? Come on. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so you mentioned in the beginning that Muhammad so unites nice. people under, yes. one, under one religion. Mm -hmm. And there's only one creator. Yes. And so the religion included you like took good notes. Jesus, Muhammad, like Moses, a, Abraham. Abraham. So now, is it a separate religion, Muslim, or you guys include like? Great question. Is it a separation of each religion? Or no. Still According to Muslims, we are following the same religion that Abraham followed, that Moses followed, that Jesus followed. The problem we have with some of the practices under these names now, is they have left the original message. For example, um, in the Catholic faith, nowadays you will see Catholics, they have the little pendants they wear, the saint's picture, and you know things like this. We don't find that in the life of Jesus. You find them going to a, a priest and saying, oh, sorry, Father, I have sinned, I killed three people, I did this, this, he's like, okay, say 10 Hail Mary, give us some money. And you have this thing called the confession. But I don't find that in the Bible. And many Christians, like Martin Luther and his objections against the Pope and the ideology in Catholicism, shows that that pure religion that Jesus was with is not being followed. Today you find many practices in Christianity that are against the Bible. You know, um, I'll give you an example. Right? This is the Bible. Not my own. Some Christian gave it to me. Right? And I'm going to read you a verse from it. Okay? Alright. So Bible. First Corinthians uh, chapter eleven, verse number five to ten. Okay? It says, But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. For that is one and the same as if her head were shaved. For if a woman is not covered, let her also be sworn. But if it is shameful for a woman to be shaved, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But a woman is the glory of man. For a man is not from woman, but a woman from man. Nor was man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of, the, of authority on her head because of the angel. Bible. So it tells us that those people who follow the Christian faith, when they're praying or prophesying for the women, they have to have the head covered. And if they don't, they should be shaved. Right? Now, Muslims don't believe 
in this exactly. We believe in hijab not as a sign of authority, but as of shyness. But I'm saying, today, when I go to a Christian church, and I've been to many, when I was growing up, I went to all kinds of churches, I didn't see them covering their head. I have people come to my house and prophesy and preach, and they don't cover their heads. And I don't see Christians following this thing. So what we say is, unfortunately, Christians and Jews, many of them, even if you look at the Jewish religion, many of the practices that you have between the Assyrian Jews and Orthodox, you don't find them in the life of Moses. So we believe that they have left that message. But we as Muslims, we believe in that pure message. The message of Abraham, of Moses, of Jesus, of Muhammad, and peace be upon all of them. We believe that's all one race. And we're following that race. And whoever wants to kind of develop their own religion, that's up to them. But we're not going to take the side road. We're going to stick to the ground. Go ahead. More questions? I think of the hardest one. Come on, man. Don't be shy. It's all right. I'm not going to get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Where did the radical... Just kidding. <laughs> where did the radical misunderstanding yes, of the Muslim culture come from? I'm sorry? Uh, where did the radical misunderstanding of the Muslim culture begin with or come from? CIA. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you talk about the radical understanding of the Muslim religion, forget culture, um, you would have to look at it in, in what do we mean by radical, right? If you look at, let, let's take a, a hot topic right now called ISIS or ISIL or IS or Daesh or something like that, or maybe just an IML, I don't know. Uh, if you look at this situation in Syria and Iraq, um, so let's see where it came from. If you look at the invasion of Iraq, anybody remember Iraq still? You invaded Iraq, right? Uh, we did, right? Everybody forgot about it now. So there were two major reasons given to us. One was WMDs, right? right? Weapons of mass destruction, which didn't exist, even though we, we had satellite pictures of an ice cream truck, and we thought there were weapons of mass destruction. Um, and the second was a connection to Osama bin Laden, which, according to all people now, except for Fox viewers, there was no connection between Osama and Saddam. Saddam hated Osama. He was a secularist. He was a Baptist. His foreign minister, Tariq Aziz, was a Christian. He, there was no radical, quote unquote, Islam in Iraq. It had the best education rate of any country in the Middle East. Go look it up. Saddam was a terrible man, don't get me wrong. I'm no fan of Saddam. But if you talk about the radical killing going on, that wasn't there. Just because somebody's terrible doesn't mean everything they do is terrible. And he, yeah, he was a god awful human being. But that doesn't mean that. He would instantly, and he, he, look, he probably stole from the people. Um, he had all those, his kids were terrible. Um, but that doesn't mean because of that, he couldn't have had good schools and good education and all these things. You know, he, he probably prided himself on having that for the kids because being able to instill a good education in the kids and getting them up made them contributing factors to the society to the economy and of course a better education you might sway yourself to liking that person that you know the the president who instilled this this education system and so you you might find yourself in favor of him and then you get older and you're like you know, okay well, you hear negative things and you're like yeah but you know look what he did for us he you know so it's a it's a trade. I'm not saying that the education system was good because he was using that, but he also could have been using it because it would have been a good way to get young people up and to get them into the economy. And you get them smart. You, you get scientists. You you never know what you're gonna what somebody is going to become when given the tools and they get into a field that they excel at. And next thing you know, you got a little genius on your hands, and you got somebody who maybe can help change the country in a positive way so you know just tried to kind of throw that one out there but we invaded a country took out their government took out their military took out their police force left ammunition dumps open but guarded the oil fields hmm. okay when you put that kind of chaos what's going to happen you're going to get chaos imagine it's tomorrow in san diego there was no police there was no military, no National Guard, no government. All of this was gone. And there was food shortages. 
Me and you would be riding, you'd be punching me, I'd be trying to get back, you'd get some bread to take home. And what would you do? You would start clumping together. Whether it was by ethnicity of Mexicans against blacks, or whites against Chinese, or whatever, you're going to start making little sex. And you're going to arm yourself, and you're going to try to survive. And that's what happened in Iraq. When you had Shiite militias, and you had Sunni militias, and it wasn't about religion, it was about survival. And in that chaos, you have perversion of religion as you are seeing today. And many of these were done by us. Because if you look at history, who armed the Afghan rebels against the Soviets? But it was the United States. You can go look up pictures of those same fighters sitting with their big turbans in the White House, shaking hands with Reagan, and they were called freedom fighters. And then when they were not happy about us going into, uh, into Afghanistan, into their land, then they're called Terrorists. <laughs> so same people. Hekmat <laughs> uh, is one of the people fighting. He was fighting since way back then. But at that time, he was a good guy. Now he's a bad guy. So it all just depends. So geopolitics is what drives these kinds of things. If you want to study the religion itself, we have the Quran. We have the books of Hadith. We have the references. We can sit down and talk. But for politics, you know, I could ask you, how, how, how did... Hitler justified his killing of Jews under the pretense of the Bible. He did. You can Google it. He quoted the Bible in his speeches. He misused it. And that's why people are misusing this time today as well. Alright, that was getting hard, so let us get back. Anybody else? Come on. Hit me with the hard stuff. You're like, should I ask that? No, I'm Muslim. Come on, man. You guys are Muslim, man. You get me all the time. Oh. That thing I was going to ask, but oh, I shouldn't have to go for it. Ask. <laughs> Anybody? Go once. I have a personal question. Go for it. Do you have kids? Do you have kids? Yes, I have two sons and a daughter. One of my sons is sitting right here. Musa, raise your hand. All right. <laughs> One of my sons is sitting right there. Yusuf, raise your foot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, and I also have a, a daughter, she's one year and eight months, and I have a wonderful wife, and I have a mother, and my father passed away. Um, what? It's, he said, I have a wonderful wife, and it says, I have a wonderful white mother. <laughs> the translation has not been very good, so I've been not paying attention to it every now and then looking down. But when he said there are different sects, it had S E X and not what S E C T S, like sections, factions. Yeah, the the closed caption has not been a hundred percent accurate. Let me tell you, I have a wonderful wife, a wonderful white mother. Gotta love that. <laughs> Not easy. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like uh, the earlier part of the Japanese experience uh, in World War II. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not easy. Obviously, they go to schools and they have, you know, we go up to stores and markets and you get uh, racist slurs and you get uh, sometimes physical attacks. Uh, recently, my car was broken into and nothing was taken. They just went in and, you know, even though there was money, they didn't take it. They just threw the papers around and I guess they were kind of scared and like, oh, they're going to find the secret documents that I have in my car. <laughs> so you get these kinds of things. And, you know, sometimes you're driving with your wife and kids and somebody yells out, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like, well, let's talk about it. They're like, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, the terrorist, I probably ran my car into your car. <laughs> but I'm not, so you better <laughs> be glad I'm not. So uh, we get a lot of racism. We get a lot of hatred. Uh, our mosques get threatened. Uh, women, Muslim women, go through a difficult experience. But we're not scared. We're going to live through it, like uh, people of Japanese descent went through their hardship, people of African descent went through their hardship, and they're still going through it to a certain extent. People of Mexican descent are going through their hardship, people of Muslim religion are also going through hardship. And racism is racism. You know, the people that are out there being racist and prejudiced, if they're saying it against us today, they're going to say it against somebody else tomorrow. So, uh, it's not easy, but we're trying to build bridges, we're trying to have these conversations, we're trying to open up dialogues, and we hope that we have a better tomorrow for my kids today. All right. Personal questions? Do I work out? No. <laughs> Anybody else? Go ahead. I noticed when I walked in, it said, like, 
Muslim woman seating? Yes. At the top? Yes. Because they get the top seats. <laughs> uh, so in Islam, we have a, a great respect for the woman. Uh, we don't believe in women being a, a, a thing for us to use for marketing or just for carnal pleasures. We believe that a woman has the right to be judged for her mind, her herself, not you know what size clothing she wears or you know how tan she is. So in that sense, we have this concept of hijab, and in that we have a concept of ikhtilat. Yani, we try to separate between the genders when there's times for focus. For example, if there's a prayer, we keep them separate in events. Why? Because we don't want the speaker to be like, oh, so I was giving a talk, you know, I, we want him to be focused on what he's doing. And we don't want people sitting next to somebody going, man, I wonder if she's, you know, whatever. <laughs> so instead we want people focused on their tasks. And that's why during prayers or events, we keep genders separate. Uh, now, when you're at home with your wife or your sister or your mother, you can mingle all you like. But when somebody is not a relative or a mahram or somebody who's close to you, then we try to keep those separate. Uh, like you find also in the Jewish faith. If you ever go to the Wailing Wall in uh, Israel, currently Israel, to be all um, and I've been there, uh, you see a separation. The men are on one side, women are on the other side, so that people can focus on their prayer and not on trying to show off the other gender. All right, we're getting good now. Come on. Anybody else? Yeah. Is that a question? Or just moving your <laughs> no, I kind of the question. You got to ask. No, no, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. I really appreciate it. Uh, and again, uh, um, please don't leave without taking a, a book or a pamphlet so that this doesn't become a, a, just one event. It becomes something that opens up a dialogue. Uh, if you want contact information, uh, Brother Mukarram is here. You can get our contact information. Uh, you can get my information. You can email me. Uh, and we'd love to talk. We'd love to discuss. If you want some free food, come on down to the mosque. You can have some food. We have an event coming up, especially for our, uh, from our sisters, our Muslim sisters, that are opening up an open house for women to come learn about Muslim women uh, uh, at the mosque. So if you want to know about that, you can ask Mukarram as well. Um, that's going to be a, a women's event. It's going to be all ladies. You're going to have food, you're going to have henna, you're going to have discussion. So you can come back to the mosque and, and check that out and learn about Muslim women, why they cover, what you can ask those questions to them directly and they'll be much better at answering than I will be. So, all right, thank you very much. Okay. That was pretty good. Uh, the closed caption thing. Yeah, that was a bit of a swing and a miss. But. I did like that he had a uh, wonderful wife, and it was a wonderful white <laughs> white mother. <laughs> I noticed it off a few times, and I would be reading, and it was off. So I just stopped reading and was just listening to him. And if I didn't understand it, I would glance down to it, and it was hit or miss as to what it was saying. So that was good. The wonderful white mother did. Oh, that did make me laugh. Okay. Well, I hope you like that. I did. Um, some of the stuff that if there's another video I done, but I haven't released it yet. Um, it might actually be released before this one. I don't know. I don't know my release schedule yet. Um, I would say he probably covered two or three things in this one that it was in the other one. Still, it was interesting. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to end this here, and I will catch you on the next one, which will be tomorrow, or if this is Friday, it'll be Monday. And until then, have a good day. Have a good day. Sorry.